Hey, it's Helen from Lumosia, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you all about correcting the white balance of your photos in Adobe Lightroom. I hope it's useful for you, and this is how we use Lightroom every day as photographers. I'll talk to you all about using the color picker tool, using the sliders, painting on a white balance correction, and also the difference between editing a raw file compared to a JPEG. So as I said, I hope it's useful for you. Uh, please do like the video if it is, and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any notifications when we launch new videos. So. I hope you enjoy the video and look forward to seeing your comments. Okay, so let's get started. So I thought the best way of explaining how to correct white balance within Adobe Lightroom is to actually show you some real life examples from some weddings that we photographed. So I've imported a selection of different images from some recent weddings uh, and hopefully they should show you a few different things and tricks along the way. So I hope it's useful for you. So for this particular image, the easiest way of correcting the white balance, which as you can see currently looks a bit too green, is to use the white balance color picker, which is this little eyedropper tool here. And you want to click on an area which is a, like a mid-tone gray, ideally. Um, so something like this gentleman's jacket here would be ideal. And you can actually see a, a little preview of the effects um, that it would have upon the image in this little and the navigator panel up to the top left. You could also select the bride's um, wedding dress. You could do um, a, a, bla a black suit, anything like that. But a mid-tone grey generally gives the best colour. It's just like having a grey card, basically. Um, so if we click on that, it'll change the white balance for you. And I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, there is some other things that if we were editing this image in reality, we would do to the image. But in this instance, it's just the white balance we're looking at, so that's fine. Now, as you see down the bottom, there's a whole sequence of images which have the same white balance from the ceremony. Now, the you could do the same thing again, um, use the kind of colour picker. Uh, the guy with the grey suit isn't there in this shot, but you could use this gentleman's jacket. It's almost as good uh, and would give a very similar white balance. However, if you've got to do that to say maybe 60 images from a ceremony, it's going to take a while and when you're trying to minimize the amount of time taken to editing to you know, make your workflow as uh, efficient as possible, then it's best to do things as batches whenever possible. So there's a couple of different ways. You could either um, select all the images in the first place so for example like that and when selecting his jacket if you've got them all selected providing auto sync is also selected down here so it says auto sync when you click on his jacket you will see that it also changes the white balance for everything down the bottom the other way so if you just undo that and you select so the other way you could do it is by um, actually copying the white balance that if you've got a white balance that you're happy with, you can copy that into the system. So you just tick the white balance there and process version here. Uh, as you can see, this is something I do quite a lot, which is why they're already ticked. Just click copy. Uh, and then it's just as simple as pasting it into the relevant images. So where I would use the copy and paste would be, for example, if um, you're in a venue and in some areas of the room it's lit by tungsten lines, some areas of the room it's lit by daylight and sometimes it's mixed, you, you might find that the same white balance doesn't apply to all the images. So if you just copy the white balance for maybe one portion of the room, then you can kind of just paste that to any of the images which are photographed in that area of the room. Uh, and so forth. Um, but generally speaking, uh, I would um, try to edit them as a batch. So in this instance, the um, colour picker did a pretty good job of getting the white balance for these 
uh, range of images. However, it's not always as easy as that. Uh, and in a situation where you have maybe a mixture of different lighting sources, so here you've got the window light, which is quite blue, and the tungsten light, which is quite yellow, you just have to go almost for a, a happy medium uh, and trying to get uh, kind of a white balance that is good for both areas. So I cho actually chose the side of her dress here rather than top because the side is actually going to get a mixture of the light both from the window and also from the tungsten. So it's going to look more realistic. Whereas if I just chose the top of her dress here, it would have been just lit by the tungsten light. So you just have to be a little bit careful and think about, okay, where's the light coming from in this image? And then also once you've kind of done the colour picker and chosen kind of that, it's these, the sliders here I always use just to kind of tweak it afterwards if necessary. So you can make it a little bit more blue or kind of more pink or, you know, just whatever final tweaks you need. The, as I said earlier, we always photograph any church situation in raw and that's because in a raw file you have a lot more flexibility what you can change afterwards because the settings of the file aren't locked into the actual file itself whereas with a jpeg file they're locked in and you kind of you're a lot more limited what you can um, actually amend so for example um, what i've done here i've actually created a here's the original raw file and I've created a JPEG version of exactly the same image to show you the difference that um, you, the different ability you have editing a JPEG file compared to a raw file. So if I was to adjust the white balance on here, not only have you got the color picker, which we've already talked about, but you've also got various different settings um, for different kind of lighting environments. So this one looks fairly tungsten. So yeah, so it's about right, maybe a little on the cold side. So I might just warm it up a fraction. Yeah, and then I'd, I'd say I'm quite happy with that one. Um, whereas if we do the same thing, actually if I do it using the color picker, then you can see I'm doing exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna just color pick based on there. And then using the color picker on the JPEG file, and try and choose roughly the same area. You can see the actual effect on the image itself is quite dramatic. The, the ability of the JPEG file to actually kind of adjust the image itself, it's almost like you're painting over it rather than adjusting the file itself. It's, you are kind of almost like putting an overlay. It's almost like it's been Instagrammed a little bit too much, which is obviously not what you want. You've also got a lot less um, pre-built options, so you can't select uh, daylight or tungsten or anything like that. You've only got, you can do auto, which gives a similar kind of look to when we did the color picker, or you can just do custom, where you might have to kind of just try to kind of manually get it looking a bit better. But whatever I seem to do to this, it just it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the raw version. And so then you kind of say, oh, maybe it's I can reduce the highlights to bring her skin tone, but then she's looking a bit yellow, a bit jaundicey, and it just generally doesn't work as well. So in any situation where you think white balance might be a problem, always 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 photograph in raw so you've got the maximum amount of flexibility afterwards the final thing i wanted to show you is that in certain situations you might uh, have a real mixture of lighting within the same environment so in this particular image the bright sorry the groom and the best man uh, we're putting on cufflinks and this is where they naturally stood to put on the cufflinks It's not where we as photographers would choose to stand them um, Because as you can see they're stood right underneath the main light in the room uh, Which is given making them look really yellow uh, and given that lit by the tungsten whereas the rest of the room is lit by daylight 
so which is giving this really kind of two-tone effect. Um, however, if we try and change this to using the colour picker tool, uh, you can see using the navigator that it would go very, very blue, even though their skin tone is now correct. So that's not right, wouldn't work. If we try to do, say, tungsten again, it basically has the same effect. Um, daylight, which is what it, this is, it's kind of a mixture, the kind of the rest of the room, um, but it actually makes it more yellow. So it's not so any of those kind of general white balance settings aren't uh, going to work for this image. But what you can do is you can actually use the brush tool here to paint on a white balance um, corrector. So using the temperature um, brush is kind of, it, normally with brushes, you kind of, it kind of stores the most recently la used settings within this um, brush itself. So under temperature, um, the last one I used made things a bit cooler. And so if we just paint this on, I won't worry about being too careful at this stage because we can change it afterwards. We just more want to see how strong the actual effect needs to be. As you can see, it's still really quite yellow. So I just want the skin tones to look a bit more natural, which it does. However, as you can see around the, um, the their heads, basically you've got a lovely blue halo where it's actually changed the white balance of the rest of the room, the, which isn't being lit by the uh, tungsten light. But you can just um, actually erase the brush. So if you're going with a slightly smaller brush, you can just kind of go around the edge of them. Do a bit here. And just any areas that you think might have you might have gone over when you were editing it. Cool. And then just just to make sure afterwards I will just increase the exposure. And I'll also reduce the highlights. Just to make sure that the, the white balance correction that I've applied works when the when the exposure is corrected which i think it does uh, after this image we actually went and put them into better lighting over by the window and, and did a staged version of the of the groom putting on his cufflinks um, but sometimes as you i'm sure are aware people don't always stand in the best light so you just have to photograph things as they happen so that's kind of all there is to it really. Uh, every image is different uh, and sometimes getting the white balance um, is just a bit of trial and error. So you have to just, you know, kind of use a colour picker and try to find, you know, different areas to colour, you know, do the colour picker and then use the sliders a little bit. But uh, do remember to use the, um, copy the white balance and then paste it in as it will really speed up your editing. Well, I hope that was useful for everyone. Um, I'd love to know your comments on how you use Lightroom, if you have any tricks for setting the white balance that I've missed out on. So if there is, please let me know below in the comments. Uh, and as I said, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel and then you won't miss out on any other videos that we've got coming up. So thanks for watching.